Hello and welcome back to the GCP Mindset channel. Today, we'll talk about understanding the role of control groups in clinical trials. More after the intro. <music> clinical trials are essential in the development and evaluation of medical treatments, as they provide valuable information on the safety, efficacy, and effectiveness of new interventions. A key component of clinical trials is the use of control groups, which play a critical role in ensuring the validity and reliability of the study results. In this video, we will explain the concept of control groups and their importance in clinical trials. We will also explore the different types of control groups, how they are designed and implemented in clinical trials, ethical considerations, and potential challenges and limitations. What are control groups? A control group is a group of participants in a clinical trial who do not receive the experimental treatment or intervention being studied. Instead, they may receive a placebo, standard treatment, or no treatment at all. The purpose of a control group is to provide a baseline against which the effects of the experimental treatment can be compared. There are three main types of control groups. Placebo control group, Participants receive an inactive substance, e.g., a sugar pill, that looks identical to the experimental treatment. This helps to account for any potential placebo effects, where participants may report improvements in their condition simply due to the belief that they are receiving an effective treatment. Standard Treatment Control Group Participants receive the current standard of care or best available treatment for their condition. This allows researchers to compare the experimental treatment's effectiveness against existing treatments. No treatment control group. Participants do not receive any intervention at all. This type of control group is less common and is typically used when no current standard treatment exists or when researchers want to observe the natural progression of a condition. Control groups are crucial for establishing causality that is, determining whether an observed effect can be attributed to the experimental treatment rather than other factors. By comparing outcomes between the experimental and control groups, researchers can better evaluate the true impact of the intervention being studied. Let's talk about designing a clinical trial with control groups. When designing a clinical trial that includes control groups, several key factors must be considered. First, randomization and allocation of participants. Randomization is the process of randomly assigning participants to either the experimental or control group. This helps to minimize biases and ensure that both groups are similar in terms of characteristics that may influence the study outcomes. There are several methods of randomization, including simple randomization, Participants are allocated to groups using a random sequence, for example, flipping a coin or using a random number generator. Block randomization. Participants are allocated to groups in predetermined blocks, ensuring an equal number of participants in each group at specific time points. Stratified randomization. Participants are first stratified based on specific characteristics, for example, age, sex, disease severity, and then randomized within each stratum to ensure balanced representation across groups. Let's talk about allocation concealment and blinding. Allocation concealment refers to the process of preventing researchers and participants from knowing which group a participant will be assigned to until after they have been enrolled in the trial. Blinding or masking involves keeping participants, researchers, and sometimes data analysts unaware of group assignments throughout the study. There are different levels of blinding. Single blind, participants are unaware of their group assignment. Double blind, both participants and researchers involved in data collection and treatment administration are unaware of group assignments. Triple blind, in addition to double blinding, Data analysts responsible for analyzing study results are also unaware of group assignments. 
blinding helps to reduce biases in the study results by minimizing the potential for participants' expectations or researchers' preferences to influence outcomes. What are the ethical considerations in using control groups the use of control groups in clinical trials raises several ethical concerns that researchers must carefully consider. Informed consent and participant autonomy. Participants must be fully informed about the study's purpose, the potential risks and benefits of participation, and their right to withdraw from the trial at any time. This ensures that participants can make an informed decision about whether to participate in the study equipoise and the ethical justification for control groups. Equipoise refers to a state of genuine uncertainty about which treatment is most effective. Control groups are ethically justified when equipoise exists, as it is unclear whether participants would be better off receiving the experimental treatment or the control intervention. Addressing ethical concerns when using placebo control groups the use of placebo control groups can be particularly ethically challenging, as participants may not receive any active treatment for their condition. Researchers must carefully weigh the potential benefits of obtaining more accurate study results against the potential harms to participants. What are the challenges and limitations of control groups? While control groups are essential for ensuring validity and reliability of clinical trial results, they also come with challenges and limitations. Potential biases in participant selection and allocation. Despite randomization efforts, there may still be differences between the experimental and control groups that could influence study outcomes. Difficulty in maintaining blinding and allocation concealment. In some cases, it may be challenging to maintain blinding, for example, if the experimental treatment has noticeable side effects or if participants inadvertently find out their group assignment. External validity and generalizability of findings. The findings from a clinical trial may not always be generalizable to broader populations or settings, particularly if strict eligibility criteria are used or if there are significant differences between the study population and the target population. In conclusion, we can say, control groups play a critical role in ensuring the validity and reliability of clinical trial results by providing a comparison against which the effects of experimental treatments can be evaluated. When designing and implementing control groups in clinical trials, researchers must carefully consider ethical issues, address potential limitations and challenges, and strive to maintain the highest standards of scientific rigor. As a beginner in the field of clinical research, understanding the role and importance of control groups will be essential to your work in designing, conducting, and evaluating clinical trials. By keeping these principles in mind, you can help contribute to the advancement of medical knowledge and the development of new, effective treatments for patients in need. Thank you for watching our video, and we hope that you found it informative. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more content on clinical research. We look forward to see you next time.